Welcome into Extra Time. Thank you very much for your tweets. Frank LaBeouf with us, as is the happiest man in London tonight. Uh, Julianne Laurent with us, <laughs> celebrating uh, PSG's victory. Uh, late though, wasn't he, Frank? Other media commitments meant that we've been hanging around for Jules. That's just the way that he... Oh my God, you had <laughs> yeah, to say yeah, that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you. <laughs> okay, first question. How does it feel to be French? Uh, with one team through to the Champions League final and the prospect of a second waiting in the wings as reigning world champions and with the knowledge, as Mbappe said so eloquently, that Ligue 1 is not a farmer's league. Ah, a good time to fly the trickle or boys. Uh, well, I'm happy for Paris Saint-Germain and Lyon. Um, I was born in Marseille. I was the captain of um, Olympique de Marseille. But I have to say that it's good to see a club, a French club, being in the Champions League uh, after the supremacy of the Spanish uh, and, uh, and maybe also the English. So it's good to see maybe, maybe with a surprise, another French club and have a, a French final, even if I doubt that Lyon is going to be able to win against uh, Bayern Munich. But it's uh, refreshing. Oh, and, the uh, fireworks are off. Oh, this, is, oh, this is the celebrations in Paris right now. Celebrate good time, come on. <laughs> <laughs> and I was saying that, that uh, no, it's, uh, it, it, it's nice, but um, we have to be humble. I mean, the League One is not, of course, the best league in the world, mm. but um, no near, we have good it, players, right? we have yeah. good teams. Mm, yeah, maybe, maybe, but uh, we, 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 the clubs are doing the jobs and it's good publicity for our country. So I'm, uh, let's say that I'm proud of it. Oh uh, yeah. How does it feel to be French at the moment, Jules? Yeah, no, I agree with, with what Frank said. You know, it's, it's good for Ligue 1 uh, to show the success in, in the Champions League because I do think, you know, all, if, if we take out the Farmers League jokes and that kind of stuff, I think a lot of people judge Ligue 1 without even watching it. Of course, there's bad teams and there's bad games. There's bad games in the Premier League, there's bad games in, in La Liga as well. There's bad teams, there's bad players everywhere. It's the same for everyone, but we, we know if you watch it, you know the level, it's still a league. Uh, that is a feeder league, which means that all the top clubs in England come and do their market every January, every summer, and go, come and, and spend a lot of money to buy the best players that we have in Ligue 1 every single time. So it can't be that bad of a league if your club comes every summer to my club to get my best player. So, you know, this is, this is the way it is, but I think it gives credibility to the league for sure, even if this is not going to happen every season. We won't have two French clubs in the semi-final of the Champions League every year. This is, you know, this is not, this is a, a freak of a moment, but still you enjoy it. And as long as it lasts. Good for your bank balance as well, Jules. <laughs> <laughs> I invite you for, for, for hey. dinner next time I'm in Bristol Connected. Uh, thank you. Can I say hi to Andrew Osati? Yeah, you know? Andrew used to, used to it, present this show when it was press pass back in the day. This when when we had good journalists at the time. You had a yeah. proper presenter yeah, then as well. Good. Yep, exactly. <laughs> in hindsight, this is an interesting point. Did Neymar yeah. actually make the best decision when he left Barcelona for PSG? What do you think? Oh. Jules? Me or Jules? Oh, I said Jules. I think I think he made the best decision, well, it was not his decision, but I think the best decision that was made for him really was that he didn't, he didn't rejoin Barcelona last summer. Yeah. Uh, leaving in 2017 like he did, like he did uh, you know, I can understand why I think he felt at that time, he was 25, why he wanted to go. And, and again, let's remind everyone that he called PSG to say, I want to leave, can you, can you, can you buy me? And that's, that's how it happened. But I think the best decision was not to go back last summer, a year ago, because I think Barca's season would still have been disastrous in many respects. I think even if had Neymar be there, maybe it would not have been as bad. But I still think the issue is far deeper at that club than just having Neymar there or not. Uh, and I think you see now with what is happening in Paris, what is building, what he has been building at PSG, why I think the right decision was for him to stay. And now he's obviously only one game away from winning the Champions League again, five years after winning it with Barcelona, but in a very, very different way mm. than the way he did in 2015 or the way he would have done had it been with Barcelona again. What do you think, Frank? Well, I think uh, 
it's a good decision for, for, for Neymar to be in Paris Saint-Germain. Paris Saint-Germain has a real future when we see a little bit of darkness for several years for, for Barcelona. But it would have been different for Barcelona. They would have saved money as well, you know. Uh, even, even if they earn lots of money with, uh, with um, Neymar's transfer, they would have saved money. When you see that with Dembele, Griezmann, mm. and even you can put Coutinho, it's more than 300 million euros that they spent, where two were on the bench and the other one was playing for Bayern Munich. So uh, it would have been a good decision for Barcelona to keep Neymar, that's for sure. To Jules, Neymar and Mbappe were bought in solely to win the Champions League. If they do win it, would or should they both consider looking for another challenge elsewhere? Mm. I think they would be looking to stay at the top. I think that's what they could do. Again, no one is going to buy them this summer. No one can afford them this summer. Real Madrid have zero money. They're not going to spend anything. The other top clubs can't afford, can't afford to buy them. It's as simple as that. So. To answer, uh, again, this kind of question, they will be in Paris next season, regardless of what happens on Sunday in the Champions League final anyway. But, 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 but of course, if, if, if they do the job that they were brought in for this season, then it, it, I think it makes them more likely to maybe leave before, you know, be, before achieving it later on, if you see what I mean. But uh, for next season, it doesn't change anything. After that, if, if, you want, if you win it once, you want to, to see if you can stay at the top and winning it again, I guess. That, that would be the new challenge in Paris. And then after that, they can go wherever they want. But of course, if they win it this year, this is, this is the, the whole project is based about this holy grail of winning the Champions League. The Qataris have been there nine, have been there nine years. They spent all that money, and especially on Neymar and Mbappe for that. And if they achieve that, one, I think it will be the greatest achievement in their careers, of course, because it's much harder to win this Champions League with PSG than, than it was for, with Barcelona when Neymar did it in 2015. And for Mbappe, it'd be his first time at 21 years of age. But, but also, I think it gives a lot of credit to what you, what you went there for initially, mm. not just for the money, not just for that, but to be part of that project. And so I think it will be very special. And I think eventually they will leave feeling that they achieved what, what, what they were bought for. Frank, Verratti or Paredes in the final? I know Verratti isn't fully fit, but you have to start him in the final. Both. He's class. Pardon? Both. Yeah, this is for Frank, not you. <laughs> uh, Verratti, because of the, the way that he can play, the way he creates and can bring the ball to and uh, delivers the ball to, to the three at front. Uh, I'm a big fan of Verratti, even if I can stand the way he behaves sometimes when he argues with the referee like I used to do. Uh, <laughs> but um, but uh, uh, he's a fantastic player. I'm not convinced uh, by Paredes. Uh, don't forget that he's been uh, uh, bought uh, 50 million plus. Um, when I don't see... Today he was good, but I didn't see fantastic things coming from him. When Verratti... He was there for like 10 minutes and delivers a fantastic pass, at least one pass. So um, I'm, I'm, I go for Verratti for sure. Frank, I've heard some fanboys want both. Yeah, but because they're blind and they, and, and they know nothing about football. Oh, Jules, you're here. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> How do you deploy both in this team, uh, Jules? How do you play both? Is that what you said? Yes. I, I listen. I think Paredes has. Uh, he's vicious. He he has that quality on his first ball, and we saw tonight that sometimes one pass breaks two lines uh, in the opposition. And I think Bayern will press really high if he's Bayern. If he's Stone, it's a bit different because they will sit deep and wait. But if he's Bayern, they will press high and to beat the press. I think Paredes and Verratti are perfect. Verratti, there's no one better that you want in your team to beat a press. Than Verratti because he's that good, and then I think Paredes again with the quality of his passing will, will be there for that. You put Marquinhos as well there. The front three doesn't change, the back four doesn't change either. Hopefully Keller Navas come back in goal. But if you've got Paredes and Verratti together around Marquinhos in that midfield, and then you can always bring Herrera for the last half hour with with his legs and his you know all his movement and he runs around all the time and everything. That's perfect. But I think the quality of passing from from Paredes could be very useful. In, in a final against Bayern if they're in the final. Uh, what are Jules' thoughts on Nagelsmann's fashion soup choice for today's match? I, I, I wonder, <laughs> I still wonder what was worth if it was his suit 
or his team's performance in that first half. I don't know what was the worst, <laughs> really. Yeah. He suits, for people who've been to London and have taken the bus in London, the, the color of the suit is the color of the seats in the London buses. Ah, it's, it's as bad as that what is. And I just, but in fairness to Nagelsmann, he's always had a really bad dress sense. Anyway, the, the quarterfinals was not too bad, actually. That's the best I've seen him dressed on the touchline for a very long time. But I've seen him with red cardigans. Wow. I've seen him with really, really bad stuff. But tonight was pretty bad, especially for such a big occasion, man. Come on. Dude, you know, put an effort in. Jules, um, it's yeah, Frank. But, 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 but Jules, Jules, yes, I loved it. I, sent, I even sent you a text saying, That's what amazing. do you think about his suit, you know? Yes. And, 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 and do you want the answer? <laughs> Can I give the answer no, to the answer? Uh, no, you don't, answer? don't give no? the answer. Okay. No. <laughs> no, okay, okay, I want, I want. I want, but really, really, I, uh, I'm sorry, that's a German suit. So he doesn't think it's sh shameful. He thinks it's uh, fashion. Right. So he doesn't think it's, uh, it's not <laughs> nice. It's not what we wear in France or maybe in the States, but it's what they wear in Germany. So you have to respect that. Come on, Dan. I know. What do you mean, come I on, Dan? Answer. I'm not getting involved in any of that. Okay. Because I have your answer, and if you're not nice, I will give the answer, your answer to the world. <laughs> no, that is a <laughs> private conversation. My lawyers will be taking okay. that phone away from you. Okay. Final point. Okay. Oh, what is this? Jules, what does it take to be as good a journalist as you? I graduate, graduated with a BA in journalism <laughs> today. Oh. oh, congratulations. And want to be a, uh -huh. as good a journalist well as you. That is from Gabriele Marcotti. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's so sweet, Gabriele. Young Gabriele. No, it's from uh, Gio. Congratulations, learn, Gio, on your degree. Yeah. Um, listen, I, the, 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 for me, the biggest advice that I can give you and Dan can give you many as well is to be passionate, to really believe in yourself that you could that you could make it it's a it's a tough industry because there's a lot of competition there's a lot of people who want to do our job and we're very very privileged to be able to do it but believe in yourself believe in your ability to do it watch a lot of football learn about the game learn to be comfortable whether you're writing doing radio commentary or analysis or tv whatever you want to do and just and just believe believe in yourself never give up and be passionate and i think that's the, that's really the most important what, what, if I can add something, I, I remember when I was a player, I didn't like the press. I didn't like the journalists. I think, uh, they didn't like and you. I thought that because they, di they didn't like me as well. But uh, I think uh, because mostly, <laughs> I, I think they were giving, they were giving details where they didn't play football at my level. So I, I thought, and and wrongly, I thought that uh, they couldn't understand what I was, uh, that was I was saying and what I was expressing. Where after my career, I share sometimes with you guys and some others in France, and uh, and I discover, as you say, people are very passionate about the game, mm. having knowledge about uh, stuff. Of course, you don't have the feeling of what I had because I was playing, but really the passion was there and is still there, and uh, that's a that's a real advice for Germany. Being passionate is really what you have to get if you're not, because it, otherwise you you won't you won't do it properly. Uh, because all the journalists that I know and I share times with them um, showed me that they're very very much passionate get as much experience as you can make the team make the coffee carry Frank LeBeouf's bags around help Julian set up his many media different portals that's what you need to do get your foot in the door and once you're there don't be an idiot uh, that's it that brings us to the end of extra time thank you very much for your tweets uh, keep them coming tomorrow it's all about Bayern Munich of course against Leon. until then goodbye well, thank you very much for watching ESPN on YouTube. For more sports highlights and analysis, be sure to download the ESPN app. And for live streaming, premium content, and let's not forget as well, ESPN FC, seven days a week. Subscribe to ESPN+. Plus.